Sing, open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power. Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise, Praise the Lord indeed. I tell you what, um, you know, you got to love this technology. Uh, I, I, you know, we, we, we've got things going out live stream on Facebook and uh, we, we kind of rehearsed how, because this is the second Sunday we're using this live streaming technology with multiple cameras and, and it's a whole new thing. Um, and uh, last week we got through it, and, and this week uh, you know, we went through and, and uh, practiced uh, how to make these transitions, trying to get to be able to add lyrics uh, for the praise band, and I, I think we're doing that. But of course, when we got here this morning and started doing it, the technology didn't work <laughs> the same way it worked uh, yesterday when we, were, when we were practicing everything. That's just the way it goes. So. Um, uh, I, I just want to say right now that I am very grateful uh, for Jan, who is running our slides, and Cindy, who is doing some technical directing and trying to figure some things out on the fly. They're do um, you know, it's, I, I'm, I'm so uh, 
happy and, and uh, we are so blessed that they are uh, getting through all of this with a smile on their faces and uh, Jesus Christ in their hearts and uh, we're going to worship today. So welcome uh, to worship. Welcome to worship here at First United Methodist Church uh, here in Victoria, Texas. A couple of things uh, also that I want to mention. Our, uh, like I said, our, our praise uh, band music should have lyrics come up on the screen. That's what we're attempting. Our, uh, the traditional hymns and things that we'll be singing, um, those can be found in your bulletin. Well, where is your bulletin? The bulletin is in the app. You can go to, we have a new app. Um, go to the app store or whatever and, and download our, our app. It's free. And our weekly bulletins are in there. And the lyrics to, those bullet, to the uh, uh, hymns will be in the bulletin. You can follow along with our call to worship and all of those things as well. Uh, something else about today is today we'll be having Holy Communion. Now, obviously, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to have Holy Communion. The way we've done it um, uh, is we're, we're going to serve Holy Communion in shifts outside. We, in our court, courtyard area, people have signed up uh, to come and receive Holy Communion, and, and we've got uh, uh, small groups that are going to be coming uh, at different times. Uh, people have signed up. Uh, for that online, and uh, we'll, we'll have our Holy Communion in communion. Because when this pandemic started, we talked about um, how we were going to do Holy Communion. Were we going to do it and have people do it at home? Were we going to have people drive through and pick up their stuff? Or, uh, but part of what we wanted to be able to do was not lose that sense of communion within the body, that sense of being together uh, in the body. And obviously, um, what, we've, what we've come to is, is the opportunity for small groups to be together uh, multiple uh, time frames. So that's what we're doing to, to have Holy Communion. It's kind of going to kind of uh, tie in with our message today in which we uh, uh, look to the feeding of the 5,000 with the loaves uh, and with just a little bit of bread, a little bit of fish, uh, and Jesus tying that to being the bread of life. So um, I invite you to join in and worship with us this morning as we invite Carol Talley to uh, lead us in our call to worship. Come, all who are weary, thy strength and us with love and grace. In this strength, we can do all things. We are here, ready to receive God's blessing. Our opening song by the praise team. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. I open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Sing worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Sing Jesus. Jesus. 
as the only move every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. opening prayer is printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. Mighty God, pour out your power and strength on us. Grant us the nourishments we need to receive your word, and may your presence fill our lives and carry us forth, preparing us to be your people and equipping us to do your work in the world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. One of the things that is so wonderful about our faith is, uh, is confession and forgiveness. That's such a core thing uh, when, when you look to Christianity. And uh, we are offered that opportunity today as a church and also in our own personal silent confession. So uh, I invite you to that time of confession as Pastor Ryan leads us in our prayer of confession. 
Let us pray. Come to us, Holy Lord, even in our times of resistance. Work within us and through us, even when we wrestle with doubt and despair. Enlighten and guide us, even in our darkest hours. Bless us and call us by name, even when we reject your presence. Hold us and love us, even when we try to run away. When we feel beaten down by the world and are weary with fatigue and sorrow, nourish us with your mercy and your grace. Fill us with your love, that we may go forth with confidence and faith. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for elimination found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Lord, Open our our hearts hearts and minds by the the power power of your your Holy Spirit, Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21, and it reads, Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So I think just about everybody has probably um, heard this story from our Gospel reading today. Uh, where, where this, this miraculous um, feeding of 5,000 people with just a little bit of fish, a little bit of bread. Um, it's, it's, it's so prominent. It's such a, it's such a, uh, a pivotal, pivotal story. It makes its way into all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the story is pretty straightforward. There's a bunch of hungry people. Um, There's not enough food. Jesus does a miracle, and everybody eats. Pretty straightforward, pretty miraculous, a great great story, and one that should make it into all four Gospels. But uh, I I want us to go a little bit beyond just the surface level of this um, story, of this miracle, which in and of itself is is (laughs) nothing short of of miraculous, but if we if we go a little bit further, if we look beyond um, the surface of this story, uh, we we uh, look to things like the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, Saint Augustine Saint Augustine said something along the lines of, uh, "The New Testament is hidden in the Old Testament, and the Old Testament is manifest in the New Testament." 
So if we, if we, if we look to the Old Testament, if we look to, to, to maybe how this story relates to some of the things in the Old Testament, we can go to 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 4. Um, a man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He said it before them, they ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord. So we see in 2 Kings chapter 4, a situation where there's, uh, you know, uh, at least a hundred people there just a little bit of food that the servant brings, and he's told, feed it to everybody. He says, I, I can't set this little amount of food before these hundred people. He's told, do it. The Lord said, do it. They'll all eat, and we're going to have some left over. That's what happens in, in our uh, gospel reading today. The disciples come to Jesus and say, we don't have much food here. He says, feed them. They say, we can't do that. But he says, do it. They have some left. Also in the Old Testament, one of the things that I'm reminded of, and Jesus actually touches on this um, in, in uh, John's Gospel, uh, right around the time that he's talking about, uh, like I said, it, this, this occurs, this story of the loaves and the fishes occurs in uh, all four Gospels. And in John's account, um, he, he uh, talks about the manna in the, in the wilderness, right? So we look at what happens there as we tie things to the Old Testament and, and have the Old Testament be revealed in the New. And, and uh, uh, the Israelites were wandering around. They were hungry as they wandered. And God provided them this manna every morning, this, this, this bread-like substance. It just showed up every morning. And they ate. The next morning, they were hungry. It showed up. They ate. They tried to store it away, but... It, it rotted, um, but, but that's, uh, God continued to provide for them day after day. They got hungry every day. God provided them with this food every day. Now, when this opportunity presents itself to Jesus to reveal himself as the bread of life, to, to tie these things together, he wastes no time there uh, on the, on the uh, mountainside with the, the, the loaves and the fish. Um, because basically what happens is, uh, is these people have followed Jesus. They've gotten around him. They're, they're uh, out, outside of town. There's no HEB. There's no other grocery stores or, or uh, uh, you know, taco huts or anything like that out there. And so the people are getting hungry. And... Um, or what's the term when, they, when they're starting to get agitated, hangry, I think? Um, when, when, when the staff, when we're all on diets at the same time, that's what, uh, that's what happens. We get hangry. So, uh, but but they're, they're get, it, it, it reminds me of, have you seen the Snickers commercials? Uh, I haven't seen them in a while, but it seems like they were showing a lot. There were Snickers commercials where uh, my favorite, I think, was Liza Minnelli. You know, there's a bunch of guys riding around in a car, and Liza Minnelli is just being how do I say this in the church? Difficult. Um, it's just being very difficult in the back seat of the car, and, and she's berating everybody, and, and all of a sudden somebody unwraps the Snickers and gives it to Liza Minnelli, Minnelli and all of a sudden she turns into um, the, the, the easygoing guy that, uh, that all the friends know. And, and I guess the point is, don't get hangry. Uh, eat the Snickers and you'll be fine. And that's kind of what's going on in this uh, gospel story. The, the the, the people are getting hangry, uh, and, and the disciples are wanting to keep them from turning into Liza Minnelli, so they go to Jesus and say, look, you've got to send everybody home, because this is about to get rowdy. And Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus says, well, look, gather up the food that we have, and, and they said, we, we've just got the two, you know, fish and a little bit of loaf, you know, a little bit of bread. And he says, do it, go get it, bring it back to me. And they do that. He blesses it, breaks it, and they, they uh, distribute it. Jesus sends these disciples out to distribute this bread and this fish, and everybody ate. Everybody ate their fill, 
And as a matter of fact, at the end of it, after he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to be distributed, at the end of all of that, and everybody ate, they had 12 baskets left over. Now, we're talking about some of the underlying things here in this story. Twelve is kind of an important number. Twelve baskets left over. Twelve tribes of Israel. Twelve disciples. And I wonder if these twelve baskets left over aren't a representation of the disciples who will be uh, carrying out the fulfillment of the church, that will continue to carry out the fulfillment of the church. Now, there have been naysayers over the years about this miracle, about uh, uh, the, the uh, multiplication of the loaves and fish. People have, have said, you know what, a, a miracle didn't happen here. Even, I, I've even uh, heard of some seminary professors push back on this and give reasonable explanations as to what ha happened uh, in, the, in the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. And, and they say, you know, Probably what happened is Jesus told everybody, you know, everybody probably has a little bit of food. Why don't you share it with people that don't have food? So just share your stuff. No, no miracle really happened. Jesus just encouraged everybody to share. Keep in mind, that's probably not the kind of thing that makes it into four Gospels, that makes it into every single one of the Gospels, just Jesus saying, why don't you share all this food? So don't if you hear that, don't discount the fact that I believe a miracle actually happened. Not to mention the fact that uh, I, I, I told you that, uh, that in chapter 6 of John, uh, John's gospel, this story makes it, this, this story of the loaves and fishes kind of kicks off uh, in John's gospel there. And uh, after he's fed the 5,000, um, according to the Gospel of John, he goes out, uh, I think he walks on water and, and, and goes and finds us, and, and he's, he's away from everybody, and the people find him. The people find Jesus. They're looking for him, and they find him, and they're, they're happy. They want to make him the bread king. They say, you know, you're, you're, you're our guy. We want to worship you. We've come to find you. They, 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 they surround him, and Jesus has a little bit of a problem with the way they're coming to worship him. He, he, he basically tells them, look, you're, you're, you're coming to me because you want me to give you more bread. You're coming to me because, because of what I can give you. Um, he says, actually, verse 26 and 27, Jesus answers this crowd that comes following him, finding him, wanting that bread, which, uh, let me point back here at this, at this uh, notion that he didn't produce a miracle. Somebody that says, hey, everybody share, they don't come looking for you and say, hey, we want you to be the bread king, right? A miracle happened. A miracle happened. So they come to Jesus. They say, we, we want more bread or whatever. And, and Jesus says to them, very truly, I tell you, you're looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. They still don't really get it. They, he, he's telling them that, uh, that, that, that this is more than food. I'm the Son of Man. I, he, he, he's proclaiming himself as the Savior and that, and that he's the bread of life. He gives eternal life. This is about more than just food. This is more than just about bread. He's trying to point to the eternal. He's trying to point to the holy. They still don't get it. They still don't get it. They're, 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 they're um, wanting to know where can we get this food? We, we want more. And, and he says to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who, abide, those who eat my flesh 
and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Yesterday, ordinary food. Yesterday, ordinary food with the bread and the fish. Today, Jesus is the bread of life. They come to him wanting food, and he turns it around and says, it's more than just about the food. It is about life. Yesterday's bread sustained you for yesterday. The manna in the desert, he points to, the manna in the desert sustained them for a day, and then the next day. But eventually, those folks, he tells them, eventually those folks that ate the manna, they died. Here I am, offering you eternal life. It's more than just about the food. With Jesus, you'll never be hungry. You'll never be thirsty. That's, that's, well, that's holy presence language. That's holy communion type language. We look at, at holy communion as this uh, uh, opportunity for us to engage and, and be in an encounter with Christ in our worship service. Um, these, these, these folks that Jesus encountered were still baffled. Even after he tries to explain all of this, and they still say to him, well, where, where can we get this bread you're talking about? Where can we get this never-ending bread? And Jesus tells them, Olive Garden. No. Um, <laughs> G- Jesus tells them, he tries to get it through to them again, I am the bread of life. My flesh is true food. My blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. That's the key here. Abide in me and I in them. Again, that's holy presence language. As we, as we move into holy communion later today, uh, that, that's, that's, the, that's the, the, the apex, I've always believed, of worship. That, that moment in which we engage and encounter the very presence of Jesus Christ. Holy Communion is not a a mid-worship snack (laughs) that we get to have. Uh, Holy Communion, like the loaves and the fishes, even like the manna in the desert, point to Jesus Christ as Savior. Point to Jesus Christ as offering the hope as offering eternal life in Christ. Holy communion isn't this parlor trick. Again, we, we, we liken it to the, to the food, to the loaves and fishes, and the fact that they wanted Jesus to produce more food for them or whatever. Um, Holy communion isn't a parlor trick. It's not a magic trick in which we, you know, uh, do the I dream of genie thing or wiggle our nose or snap our fingers and all of a sudden the elements that are on the altar table turn into the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. It's, it's, it's not a magic trick. It's something that Jesus offers us. By the way, uh, speaking of magic tricks, um, some of you may know I used to, I used to, to be a, a magician back in the early 90s. Um, do, did comedy and magic and stuff like that. And, and the term hocus pocus, you know, a magician, hocus pocus, and a rabbit appears or whatever. Hocus pocus, that's believed to be tied to the actual early Latin liturgy of Holy Communion. Hocus pocus uh, just kind of got transformed from hocus corpus, which means body, uh, body of Christ. Um, so anyway, and that's, and that's, that's where some of these misconceptions of, 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 you know, doing a magic trick and turning the 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 bread and the wine into the body and blood of Christ, but it's so much more than that, the body. And and that's that's one of the difficulties that I have from time to time when we talk about the body and blood of Christ. Yes, body and blood of Christ, but so much more. We don't want to reduce what happens at Holy Communion to just a mere bit of food to eat. If we reduce flesh and blood to just food and drink, 
We miss out on the fullness of Christ. We miss out on uh, the Christ, the eternal Christ that Jesus is talking to these folks in John chapter 6 about. That he, that he gave them food. And they come to him wanting more. And he begins talking about his presence. He begins talking about abiding in him. In the context of this food. My flesh is true food. My blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. It's more than just food and drink. It's an abiding presence. Not just body and blood only, but the fullness of Christ made known to us through the bread and through the wine. Even as the loaves and the fishes and the manna in the desert point to this, that Jesus institutes for us. Now, when we talk about food, when we talk about bread and wine, when we eat the bread and the wine, even if we want to say when we eat the flesh and the blood, will our bodies be hungry again? Yeah, our bodies will be hungry again. Our bodies will need food again. Can we live on bread and wine? No. But when we receive that abiding presence of God, take him in. Unite with Christ in this supernatural, special way. We'll never hunger in spirit. God bless you. Firm our faith uh, in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And as we prepare our offering today, um, uh, you can go online uh, to our website at fumcvictoria.com, and there's an opportunity for you to give online. We also have uh, online giving available on our app. Um, you can also just send, a, a, send it in the mail. Uh, we, we check the mail here. Uh, it can come the good old-fashioned way, uh, 407, 407 North Bridge in Victoria, uh, 77901. But one of the other things that we have to offer, there are a lot of gifts that we have to offer in addition to financial gifts. And one of them is prayer. And I uh, want to uh, uh, invite you to text your uh, prayer requests to us. Uh, I believe we're going to have, are you going to be, uh, we'll have the uh, uh, number to text your prayer requests in the comments section of our live stream. So uh, take a moment during our uh, offertory uh, that our choir is, is ready to, uh, to offer uh, and send us our pr your prayer requests and we will include them this morning uh, in our offering.
Let us pray. Gracious God, your goodness is unmistakable. It pours forth from your hands in abundance because it's part of your very nature. There isn't a day when we aren't covered by your blessings. And it's through your generosity that we learn what it means to love. Help us to love boldly and to bless freely through these gifts that we bring. May they be used to do your good and to draw us and others closer to you. Amen. This morning we have received the following prayer requests. For Al Seifert, for school administrators, teachers, staff, and students preparing for the new school year, for Methodist Day School, for Marilyn Chambliss, and uh, for David Hensley, who is going through surgery this morning, and for his wife, Nelda. And we have a celebration of a wedding for Christopher and Krista Harms this afternoon. <coughs> and another prayer request for Danielle. If you would please keep these requests on your hearts as we go to God once more in prayer. Holy God, life is full of unexpected moments that have the potential to disrupt or to derail us from the path that you have set before us. And it's easy for us to feel lost when distractions present themselves and take our focus away from you. When we find ourselves untethered from our anchor and wandering aimlessly, help us to recognize your voice and to see your light guiding us back to the peace offered by your presence. But Lord, we know that sometimes this is easier said than done. Sometimes those distractions that steal our focus are much more than we could ever have anticipated. And they take us so much further and deeper into dark valleys. So we pray especially for all who do not only feel lost and aimless, but who no longer seem to recognize themselves when they look in the mirror. We pray for those who have lost touch with friends or family and can't figure out how to reconnect with those they love. We pray for those who have experienced divorce, for those struggling with addictions, for those with suicidal thoughts, and for others who have damaged relationships as a result of poor decisions. Help them to know that your grace is infinite and unconditional. Help them to know that they are loved in spite of their mistakes, for we have all made them. And help them to realize that your welcome never ends and that there's nowhere that they can go that you won't follow. We pray for healing for the sick. We pray for the hungry to be fed. We pray for wisdom and encouragement to reach those searching for it. We pray for comfort and peace to fill those who are grieving or those who may be feeling anxious. And we pray for your love and presence to surround us all. We lift our prayers to you. Those named and those still on our hearts with the words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Him, Lord, whose love through humble service.
forth in the presence of the bread of life. Bread that doesn't satisfy hunger that comes back, but bread that satisfies us eternally, now and forever. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.